Welcome back to Dad Me, bitch. Brendan Donegan, Rob Cruz, hey. Danny Dove. What's happening? Tim. And me. <laughs> hey, everybody. Hey. How's it going? It's good. Welcome, boys. Good. Guys, good. Um, Tim, I saw something pretty jarring on the way here today. Uh, I got off at my exit, mm-hmm. and I was, at, I was waiting uh, to turn. I drove down Bath Street, Ooh. which is relative to what I'm about to tell you. Uh, I came. I was coming up to the stop sign. I look off to my right because I noticed some motion inside of a little tan car. What do you think I saw? Um, going by the tweet that I just strolled by, uh, an old guy getting head. <laughs> <laughs> You're right. It was an old guy getting his dick sucked. Like you told Twitter before me, dude. Your oh, best friend in the God. whole world, dude. You I get to so hear about excited, that shit man. first. You think I don't want to hear about an old guy getting his fucking dick sucked? <laughs> dude, spring has sprung, man. Yeah. Ooh. What was hope- this? Oh, sorry. He was hoping that eclipse was going to block it out. <laughs> he's, like, he's like, I got the wrong day. <laughs> staring directly at the sun. Yeah. God, man, imagine how powerful you feel staring directly at the sun while you're getting your dick sucked on the road. Yeah, that's, that's so nice. You ever got head in a parked car? Mm. Yes. I think so. Yeah. By yeah. a paid lady or a regular? It was love. Yeah, love. We were in love. He was a good dude. Um, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. This sounds like one incident, the way you guys are almost like sharing the reminiscence. I was stuck in Rob's yeah, yeah, yeah. Rob was what, summer 13? Oh, yeah. That, that's why I gave him the bigger knife. Yeah. <laughs> Mine's more of a fat and thick. Rob's more of a long and skinny. But the handle's nice. Oh, yeah. Was this guy getting his dick sucked by, was there affection here or was this a professional? It was a pro. She had bright red hair and not like the ginger kind, like the kind that gets the attention of like a, a guy on the side of the road. Yeah, like a hooker that just got her tax refund. Mm-hmm. Yeah. 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 Ooh, yeah. She got her hair did. Mm-hmm. Yeah. If you do that professionally, your hair needs to be the color that bulls run towards. <laughs> 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 that, that's really how you get them. <laughs> now, here's the thing. I, I've, I'm curious because someone just, uh, there was just a, uh, a pretty popular tweet that I saw about um, the street prostitutes in Seattle being what out they of control. Doing? They're just standing around waiting for guys to drive by. They want to get their dick sucked in the middle of the day. And they go, this is what Seattle looks like now, man. Thanks yeah. a lot, you know, uh, whoever you're blaming. But that's been, we, we've been walking amongst them forever in yeah, Philly. Yeah. Seattle, I'll, go ahead. I was going to say, Seattle seems like the kind of place where, like, like that would, like, drum up tourism. You know, like Pike, Pike Place, they're throwing fish. Like, what if they're, like, doing that with pussy? Yeah. You got to catch it with the fucking newspaper. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Got to check out Seattle. Mm-hmm. That's what they do when they suck your dick. They jerk it and a, <laughs> a hooker down the street yeah. catches it in her a mouth. A longshoreman is just waiting yeah. for it. <laughs> How no. much traffic was this guy in that he was like, look, I can't even wait till I get home. Like, just fucking pull over on the highway, suck my dick. Dude, it's honestly it. great thinking on his part because nobody spends more than three seconds in that spot. True. That's just, you want to get through, you want to get out, and you yeah. want to get on your way. So, I mean, he really had things figured out. And uh, there's some construction around there, but, you know, that's the extent of it. It's not a place where people will typically pull over. That's true. I want to see, I want to be, I want to bear witness to one of these dick suckings someday. Come with me. Because I'm so, I'm so curious as to like, I mean, that's, that's, that's a lot of pressure. A stranger pulls over in his car and he shakes $40 out the window and it's like, okay, game time, dude. Time to make this guy fucking nut as fast as possible. Yeah. You know so, he didn't have air conditioning in his car too. It's probably hot yeah, as hell. Yeah, but yeah. Bro, I was just going to say like, this might be like the end of like the sweet season for hookers because like when you get another 10 degrees like yeah. when that diaper wind hits man that's a problem there's two good yeah. weeks of sucking dick yeah, yeah. <laughs> for street prostitutes yeah. and they're behind us yeah you gotta wait for the groundhog to come out <laughs> see <laughs> punks a tony pill <laughs> <laughs> two more weeks of dick sucking and that's it and then and then you're sweaty you fucking smell like uh you got that like soil stink about you oh. like a fat boy who's been walking around the neighborhood all day knocking yep, for his yeah, friends yeah, who yeah, aren't yeah. coming out <laughs> and i i just wonder like what i mean are they are they shredding the meat and these dudes pop fast i are think they... that's the goal because like unless all right winter time dick suck you kind of want to make it last for warmth but spring and summertime dick suck, you want to kind of like rip through it like it's a fucking yeah. pizza pie eating contest. Wham, bam, thank you, man. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. And like I was going to mention this to you earlier, but um, I saw a hooker near your old house one time that really, it really drew a lot of emotion out of me because it was the dead of winter and she had a cast on her leg. Yeah. A fresh cast. Yeah, man. And initially I felt bad for her, but wintertime has got to be like a hooker summer. Dude, cast, caster in Kensington, there was a lady who would post up right in the middle of the intersection and uh, I walked, I drove by her a couple, I mean, watch, dude, watching a lady standing in the street trying to figure out whose dick she could suck, and she's wearing, like, a winter coat and an air cast. 
<laughs> and it's just like, dude, I, I don't know if there's a human experience lower than this. Yeah. <laughs> it's yeah, like that's 30, crazy. 13 degrees outside. I didn't even know they worked there in the winter. Yeah, man. I mean, what yeah. are you? I, I thought it was like a teachers. Readers? You don't think yeah. they have to take a season off? They're PTO. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah they're the postal service too. They're they gonna make snow. They're gonna out. make all my money yeah. in the spring. Yeah, yeah. Too hot in the summer. Too cold in the winter. Yeah. The, the, if you, if you were a hooker, what, what season would you rather do? If you had to choose one, dude, I will tell you this: uh, a lot of hookers that I follow on Twitter, they're they're traveling hookers, and they'll post like, "Hey, really? I'll, I'll be in Atlanta this." A week. lot of hookers that I follow on Twitter. <laughs> <laughs> They're like comedians. Hey, I'm going to be in Boston this weekend. <laughs> 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 I feel like they do be like, Key hey, West, the fuck this will weekend, hunt. you're going to be inside me. Yeah. <laughs> wow, yeah. man. But I think that's the upper echelon of hookers where you can kind of like, you know, build your own game. Whereas yeah. like there's hookers that are just relegated to specific cities and that's the toughest hooker existence. Yeah. Someone sent me a video of a guy who was kind of doing like hooker reviews in Kensington. Oh, like he was driving around like, yeah, this corner's okay. A lot of nasty pussy there. Go down the street a little bit. These these girls are too, they're too high. That's a good service. Yelp for hookers. Yeah, I mean, this guy, I, uh, this man shouldn't exist. Yeah. This, <laughs> is a, this is a guy who like. Just called help. <laughs> 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 Do you think hookers like that? Because, you know, you watch like a Vice documentary where they're going to like a drug den and the guys are are clearly okay with them filming there. But it's like shit that would get them locked up forever, right? Yeah. You think hookers like that? Yeah, well, they're all wearing shiesties, and like it's it's funny how they mob up for those documentaries. By they the love way, it. there's yeah. like dudes yeah. just yeah. dudes not even doing anything, just like in the background of the shot, like either holding a gun or hands crossed. You think they're doing the same thing with hookers? I wonder, man. No, I doubt it. Yeah, I mean his dick stinks, but <laughs> 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 his truck still cashes. <laughs> you think hookers accept check? Uh, no, no. You would have to have a bank account. And I don't know how many of them are rocking with a checking and savings. They probably don't that, go That's how Jerry Springer went down. He wrote a bad check to a hooker. Really? Uh, oh, no. that's right. Wasn't he mayor or something? Uh, Jerry Springer? Yeah, yeah Pussy mayor of Cincinnati. Cincinnati. <laughs> Pussy <town. laughs> AKA Pussy Town. Yeah. That's got to be the best, though, being the mayor and going to prostitutes. Like, that's not a life that I ever imagined for myself, but, like, I'm glad there's guys out there doing it. That's one of the yeah. bennies, I think, of becoming mayor is, like, you just oh yeah hit up the pros. Yeah, and, I mean, imagine, and you're in, like, a fancy, like, office that hasn't been updated in, like, 40 years. Yeah. You're afraid to kind of touch anything because it's like, well, the next mayor is going to be here. Like, this is an institution. I'm just yeah, the guy man. that got elected for a couple of years, and it's like, God, I swear man. to God, you fucking say it. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I, can have, I know where your daughter is. I could have her killed. Yeah. But Keep having a political up. secret must be so exciting. Ooh, man. Oh, man. I would love You got to feel on such edge oh at all God. times. Dude, imagine if yeah. in your past, like, you hit a fucking little boy with your car yeah. and, and you drove away. <laughs> yeah. Imagine hitting and running a child and killing them. <laughs> Knowing then, that you did that and then running for and office then, later and then, on. Dude, and it's just, like, cut to you at a press conference and you're just, like, shifting your tie and sweating. <laughs> hope nobody Ooh. takes that up. Yeah. <laughs> oh, man. Yeah, I hope no one ever asks about 1997 again. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that'd be so tasty. That's or being so a real sexual deviant, that must be so exciting because you're like, like I want to come so bad. That's, that's what, what I think. Exhausting. Tell anyone? Yeah. No, I think that's what most deviants are all about. I but don't think also it's. I'm doing so much for healthcare. Oh my god! <laughs> children to die. I saved the fucking pension fund. <laughs> but also, you know, yeah, he's just hitting them. Of course. Yeah, that's got to be pretty juicy too. I was at uh, my buddy Dan Callahan's wedding a couple years ago, and uh, his best man, so there's an old um, uh, roast of Bob Saget and Gilbert Godfrey. His joke is uh, that Bob Saget raped and killed a girl in 1997, mm -hmm. just keeps saying it over and over again. <laughs> so Dan and his buddy are huge Bob Saget fans. Nobody else at the wedding, obviously, knows Oh, that. no, not an inside joke that doesn't go over the wedding. Not only that, at the wedding, the best man, normal speech, Rachel, you look beautiful tonight. Uh, Dan, he's a good guy, even though he raped and killed a girl in 1997. <laughs> what? Complete silence. And then after that goes, it's a beautiful venue. <laughs> <laughs> Slips back. I had to stop and go, what, what did he just say? Everybody was like, what did he just say? He and didn't tell anybody he was going to do this ahead of time? Did not tell anybody. Slipped back into our normal speech about you know the bride and groom after that, but just tossed in a raped and killed a girl in 1997. Was his body like, hey man, great joke, thanks a lot. My grandmother loved that, <laughs> by the way. <laughs> yeah, well, these people, You think these people want to hear the word rape ever? <laughs> he said that he was going to make some jokes about Irish dudes being drunk, but he thought that was over the line. So he, he cut oh, that out. No. Went with the classy rape joke. <laughs>
No, yeah. not the fucking roast the Bob Saget. To this man. day, one of the one of my favorite moments. I think it's ever I've ever been. A Did part you get to? See, yeah, you got to see it. I got to see it live. Yeah. Oh man, and how quiet was the room? Or was there like a? <gasps> I can't describe how quiet the room. Like it was the most quiet a room has ever been. Damn. It was. Uh, it was unbelievable. Damn. Pretty brutal. Mike, have you ever embarrassed yourself at a wedding? Have you have you I told have. me a story about you embarrassing <laughs> you? You drank piss or something? Uh, well, all right, so not that night, but I was coming off a coke bender, and I went. I was in my buddy Steve's wedding. That's what it was. And the night before, I was at uh, I think it was called Excitement Video. It's down off of um, off of Pass Yonk. But I was just, I got a bunch of coke. By the Purple Orchid? Yes. Yeah. It's, on an, it's, it's literally on an island there. Yeah. And I just got a bunch of coke, and I just sat in one of the Jack Shacks for like four hours, just feeding 20s into this thing, just watching porno all night until it was time to go to Steve's wedding. And uh, I went, I got dressed, and, and I ran out of coke, so it's like just decimation Oof, setting in. Yeah. Calm down. But I went, and like, I just, I wanted to do something funny at Steve's wedding. And to me, funny was to to give my best man speech shirtless. <laughs> oh, right. The Burt Kreischer of weddings. Yeah, it's like, oh, yeah. This is this is this is gonna set this place on fire. And it was just dead silence. And what kind of shape were you in at the oh time? My God. I was probably twenty pounds heavier than I am now. So like, not good. How long was <laughs> yeah? How, how long was the speech that you realize you go? Oh, this wasn't a good idea. And then you have to finish the. Oh, the dude! Imagine friendly. putting the shirt back on <laughs> its speech though. <laughs> Dude, Dude, it, it was like sentimental. A little bit, yeah, because I did love Steve. <laughs> yeah. I hated his wife. I ended up, I ruined the relationship <laughs> because she came at me in my own house, which was way over the line. But that was, you know, like three months or so after the wedding. But at the wedding, I wasn't even the best man, so it was not appropriate for me to give a speech. <laughs> yeah, I was did just. Did a anyone guy. ask you to, or did you say, "Hold on, is this an I asked. Hold on, before we're done with the speeches, I have one. I have something to say. Yeah, I asked Steve if I could do it, and his wife was like, "Mike, do whatever you want," which was very gracious of her at the time, even though she did end up being a uh, Pittsburgh cunt, which I told her she was. Yeah. in my house a few months later. Nice, but yeah, dead silence, man. I and mean, it's like, do you think she was actually a cunt, or was she just not being cool about this whole thing? No, she was a cunt, man. <laughs> no, she was definitely a cunt. I mean, it's probably impossible to know. But let me tell you this, all right. So yeah. if, if you're over somebody's house, and yes. you have an issue with them, there's a okay. point where you just leave because it's escalating to a point where sure. it's it's just going to become uh, an irreparably damaging situation. Maybe, yeah. Yes. And uh, what was the nature of the disagreement? Remind me, please. So I was taking my shirt off. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no, dude, it was uh, I was not in the wrong and I still believe I'm not in the wrong. So after a Flyers game, we went to Chicken and Pete's. Yes. And the Flyers come to Chicken and Pete's to hang out. Yeah. And that's why we were there. We wanted to say hi to the guys. I did. I wanted to say hi to all the guys there. <laughs> and me, Steve and his wife had sat down. I ordered um, clams and red I sauce. I think John LeClaire is going to the bathroom. I'll be right back. <laughs> dude, it's not far <laughs> off from that. Thing. <laughs> Uh, yeah. Jeff Carter came in, Mike Richards came in, and uh, Riley Cote, who is the nicest guy on the fucking planet, sat down with his girlfriend in a, in a players-only section. So I went and I just I went into the player section because I wanted to talk to Riley Cote. Yeah, and I just sat down. I introduced myself. I started asking him questions about. You hockey. sat down uninvited. Uninvited. <laughs> I sat down, and Steve's wife, up until this point, was aces. She even brought my my clams and red sauce to the table so I could sit and eat while I talked to Riley Cote. Nice. And he did not have any issues with this. He was cool the entire time. That's not the same thing as not having any issues with it. He was cool the entire time. We're making assumptions about the issues he did or did not have. He's visible enough in the public eye right now that I could probably arrange a meeting to ask if he remembers this. <laughs> Is it's, he the guy that's advocating yes. for uh, brain injury yes. treatment? Yeah, he's the man. But dude, at that point... No, he's also brain injured, though. <laughs> <laughs> he's so cool, man. He's not, even, he's not even saying anything to me. He's just listening. He's the best listener ever. So I start a flashing a, a flashlight in his eyes rapidly. <laughs> <laughs> Mike's like, do you remember this? He's like, I don't remember anything since 2002. Yeah. <laughs> Who? <laughs> but dude, she brought my, my clams and red sauce over, and uh, I'm eating it. And after we're done, it's time to go home. Uh, she's she won't speak to me in the parking lot going out to the car. Uh -huh. I'm like, Melissa, what's wrong? She won't say anything. We get to my house, and I'm like, Melissa, I'm not getting out of the car until you tell me what's wrong. She's like, when I brought your clams and red sauce over to you, you told me to fuck off, which is an insane... I, I would never say that. There's no reason for me to say that. Yeah. yeah. But she might have been harsh in the vibe of me interacting with Riley Cote, so... You went, yeah, thanks. Yeah, fuck off. Mm. Yeah. 
in an, in an indirect way. In hindsight, it's conceivable. I might have said something relative to that, but I would never look at a woman who just brought me dinner and said, fuck off. Right. I'm talking to Riley. Hey, I'm talking to my friends over here. Yeah. Yes. Yeah, yeah, Sorry, yeah, yeah. she's bothering us, man. It's my friend's fucking girlfriend. But I invited them in for a beer. Her and Steve came in for a beer. And we're not getting anywhere with the argument. And then uh, she's like, you're, you're obnoxious uh, uh, when, you're, when you drink. And then she was standing next to my TV, which had a picture of my family on top of it. And she's like, she grabs it and she's like, look at this. These are the lives you're affecting. Granted, this oh. is an argument about hockey and fucking clams right now. Ostensibly. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> she's like, these are the lives that you're affecting with your behavior. And at that point, I That's just a little lost dramatic. it. Yeah. yeah. So I called her a Pittsburgh cunt and me and Steve started fighting. And that was the last that, uh, oh, no. oh my that God. I ever spoke to her. That's the sh- yeah. You know what? You should reconnect with her because that's the closest thing you got to an intervention. <laughs> and, Tim, I've honestly always been a little bit annoyed at my family that they never gave me an intervention. I know. And this Pittsburgh cunt, you know. But she was yeah. wrong. <laughs> I mean, uh, how, how. You know, deep, hindsight's 2020. Mm, how deep into the drinking were you? But was it uh, already uh, becoming a problem at this point? Dude, I, I or mean, was I, this I, early fun days? I drank like every day, but like, I think I'm pretty. Pretty honest about when I'm an issue or was potentially an issue. Yeah, that's true. You do have a pretty good track record of that. Yes, as far as if you we also know. did not actually say fuck off, that is very assumptive to go. The look that you gave me yeah. was fuck off, and especially if you're like, "Well, I didn't mean it that way. I was just in the zone talking to some fucking fly guy." Yeah, and that yeah. and that was my position because right. Brendan, I truly think that she was annoyed that I made them wait for me to finish. Right. Whereas they could have just left and I could have taken a cab home. Yeah, that wouldn't have been an issue because I'm talking to the guys, man. <laughs> How long were you sitting with Riley Cote? Dude, for like an hour, man. Oh Dude, they were porn girlfriend. stars there. He just finished the game and he's with his girlfriend. <laughs> and a guy who's fucking, he's got garlic marinara burps in his face. <laughs> <laughs> so wasted that he tells the woman that drove him there to fuck off. <laughs> For an hour, oh my god, that is that is punishing on a new level. An hour is a long uh, impromptu <laughs> sit down, but bro. I'm, I'm talking... sure he was feeling it too. Yeah. He was, man. I'm, yeah. sure, I'm sure you guys connected. <laughs> Finally, out. a fan that gets it. <laughs> I was running out of questions, and he was like the Flyers enforcer, and I was running out of questions, and I could feel it like who's like the um the hardest fight you've had. <laughs> Tim, not far off. I asked him who's the most difficult goal to, goalie to score on. And he's like, well, I'm not really a goal scorer, but I think the best goal in the league is Martin Brodeur. So I was like, all right, cool, man. <laughs> he is good. Same, <laughs> <laughs> like, hey, man. They have a statue of him. <laughs> yeah. That old Farley sketch where he's like, you remember when yeah. uh, you fucked that guy Dude, that was <laughs> That was awesome. <laughs> that, was, that was so cool. <laughs> oh, my God. Uh, I still don't think I was wrong, and I think she uh, I think she was just digging well, her claws true. into Steve and trying to pull him away from Well, her. then in that case, I think you should reach out to her and kind of demand satisfaction. Like, uh, hey, look, I've thought about it. I'm in a better place now. You were still wrong, and I think you should make this right. Yeah. You know, we could have her on. I'd be up for that. <laughs> <laughs> Honestly, like, I still harbor a lot of resentment Dang. because... That ended my relationship with Steve. I right. did surprise what about Steve? Steve. Let's get Steve in here. Uh, I think they're divorced, so we might be able to. Um, let's try to reunite them. Let's try to save their marriage. No, let's try to save my friendship. Oh yeah. Well, get Steve. If they're divorced, just get Steve back in here. You guys have a good chance. Dude, Dude. Yeah, they're divorced. Dude. 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 About the, what's what's is in the past? Dude, it's in the past. Brennan, I had to resort to like side bitch type behavior. Yeah. Because we would go away to an Eagles game every year. I miss you, Steve. Dude, and uh, I, I had WhatsApp. surreptitiously planned my trip to meet Steve in Chicago without <laughs> him knowing, because I knew that if, if if he knew I was coming, he would have to tell his wife. So I told his brother not to tell him I was coming. Yeah. And I just surprised him at the airport that I was there. Yeah. Did he and like it? He knew, I could tell that he knew he was going to get in trouble He's for just me being edge. there. And it was just, I could tell we didn't have that anymore. Right. <laughs> oh my God. It wasn't the same. <laughs> <laughs> oh my God. Wow. Man. Wow. Yeah, man. So. I don't know. I was justified. Phenomenal. Yeah. I don't know. I think you could rekindle with Steve for sure, especially if she's out of the picture. I think so too, man, because Steve actually, this was very sweet of him. When I, when I had a blog 10 years ago, he followed my blog because when people would sign up, I would see their email. Address. Dude, he's still thinking about you, dude. No, yeah. man. It's so hard. It's like, you know, 
Whoa. I'm also kind of spun out by the minutia that you're tracking. <laughs> <laughs> That's crazy. <laughs> like yeah, crossing his name off a list, like thank God he hit fucking he he grabbed the RSS. Thank you're lucky. Bro, I mean, we're we're best friends, man. Yeah, real bummer. Yeah, shirtless at a wedding, dude. I mean, that's that's tight. I know, man. That is nice. I would never take my shirt off at a friend's wedding who I wasn't like super fucking tight with. Yeah. So I don't know that I would. Well, hmm. You might pop no. the top off. You don't think? I don't know. I don't know. Because then once you get to a wedding and you see how many old people you've never met before, you go, "Whoa, yeah, I probably shouldn't <laughs> yeah. be here at all." Yeah. But that's the time where you feel compelled to fuck it up for them. Yeah, because they they're just resigned to comfort at that point, and yeah. you want to throw a monkey wrench into their lives as much as you can. Yeah, I okay. Now I understand where you're coming from. <laughs> <laughs> so I mean, much like Brendan's buddy, it's like talking about rape at the wedding. It's like I get where he's coming from because <laughs> you just you, you want to be a little Grinch. <laughs> yeah, yeah. You do want to be a little Grinch, and and Still then also the too that there's the the whole vibe of everyone else is like. That the, they're giving the, the the shaky hand, reading off the paper, like Mike. Oh yeah, there's only a few words that I could brothers. possibly say, <laughs> right. like that kind of shit. Yeah, yeah. You're like, let me spice this thing up, dude. Yeah. These yes. guys don't know what they're missing. They Jennifer has been my best friend since we were four years old. <laughs> Miriam Webster says friendship. <laughs> For those yeah, of you shit. that don't know me, we all fucking know you, <laughs> stupid bitch. I, I gave a best uh, man speech and I got so nervous, dude. I'd be way yeah. more nervous to give a best man speech than do stand up. It's like it was way so scary. Yeah, no doubt. It was like a year ago. Really? Yeah. yeah. I, I would be nervous right now. I, I opened up with a <clears throat> fucking. Uh... <laughs> <laughs> hey, can you guys hear me? Hear it up. All right. <gasps> Did you get emotional, Rob? Uh, I did get a little emotional because I tried to I tried to do it like stand up where I did uh, bullet points. Uh, and then I had a I had what a, else I have for you guys? I, yeah, yeah. <laughs> what else? Uh, what else? What else? <laughs> uh, I had a bullet point that just said "Speak from the heart." <laughs> <laughs> and you know, um, do thing, not forget the thing about being friends with Jeremy is um, uh, <laughs> he's a fucking faggot. <laughs> No one's laughing. You're like, oh, <clears throat> I was just, I was just saying, it would be funny if someone did that. Yeah. Oh, fuck. Um, you guys are gonna yeah. be great together. Uh, you know, just uh, uh, all jokes aside. <laughs> yeah, the, the all jokes aside came. Yeah, uh, I kid, but, but seriously, folks. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Did I, you make eye contact with him as you were saying this? Yeah. Oh, Is yeah. that when the waterworks happened? There was a. There, there was like. A, <sighs> that, that was. <laughs> <it>. <laughs> Well, it's, you get up there, it's so quiet. Like, at least with stand-up, you have the context of, like, everyone knows you're there to fuck around and goof off. Like, yeah. with a best man speech, you're like, if you're trying to be f not, you know, it's not really built in that it's like, hey, we're all palling around having a good time mm -hmm. here. They don't know if it's going to be sentimental, if it's going to be funny. Also, you're almost an elected official. There's only one guy yeah. giving the best man speech. Right. So it's like, you're the elite of the elite. Like, a lot of stand-ups think that they have something. Let's see you hit the best man circuit, right. okay? Right. Let's see you give a fucking speech. Let's see you speak from the heart. Harder oh, than it dude. looks. Harder I, than I it had looks. a bad speech moment. I did um, the commencement speech in my college. Not because what? I was like valedictorian or anything. Like I just Well, like, it's also not valedictorian, it's valedictorian. Valedictorian. <laughs> <laughs> Pause. <laughs> I don't even say it like that. Yeah. Clearly I was not. Yeah. Uh, but they just like voted for somebody to do it. And uh, I don't know why I decided they to like Brandon, give this a shot. Brandon. Brandon. And uh we love you, B-Dog! <laughs> yeah, they're like, this is our sickest dude. Yeah. yeah. Dude, so I got there. It's like, so I went to University of Scranton, which is relatively small school. It's like maybe 4,000 mm -hmm. undergrad. But you get there, everyone has family. So it's like 10,000 people. And I did not take that. It's like a stadium that this Ooh, is that. Ooh, you're like JFK. And I'm up first, dude. <laughs> like no host bringing you right up. And uh, so the only one that's famous from Scranton is Joe Biden. So I remember thinking like, I, uh, oh no. I specifically <laughs> plan this out. I go, let me just throw in a political joke. And this was 2015, so he wasn't even president. I guess he was, I don't know, VP at the time or something. But I was like, let me just write a political joke so people think I know something about politics. Mm -hmm. And I just wrote, there was a lot of like skunks around Scranton. <laughs> that ever, like, just <laughs> the animal skunks. So I wrote something. It was so stupid. I was just like, um, 
Scranton, the uh, land of the skunks and the home of Joe Biden. I don't know which one stinks more, like something. (laughs) (laughs) So I'm like, whatever. Let's go, Brandon. (laughs) So I'm like, let's go, Brandon. Yeah, Yeah, dude. I started that whole thing. (laughs) So I'm thinking, I'm like, it's pretty lighthearted. Everyone's like, oh, and I'm like, like 10,000 people. Mm -hmm. And I do the rest of the speech. It goes, you know, fine. Uh, Because I got off the topic. Joe Biden raped somebody in 2007. (laughs) (laughs) To kill the girl. In four years, there's going to be a laptop. (laughs) (laughs) So my brother comes up to me after. He goes, hey, dude, good speech. What was with the Biden joke? I go, yeah, I didn't think it was that big of a deal. He goes, dude, Joe Biden's son died today. (laughs) (laughs) Whoops! Oh my God, dude. dude! There's Man. a guy in the back on the phone. Yeah. Hey, Alex, it's your cousin, Marvin, Marvin Jones. <laughs> <laughs> you know the shit you're going to hear. <laughs> Listen to this. <laughs> so they just thought I was trying to be the edgiest commencement speaker of all time. You know, I had but, written it a couple of weeks prior. Dude, not, no. in your defense, how many dead kids does a guy fucking have? Yeah, a couple. Yeah, the, he has like two, three. No, I think it's just the one. Just the one. Oh. But then you have Hunter, who uh, you know that he like should a be giant hog. Kid. Yeah. Yeah. And you do, I think you do kind of rank your sons by meat. Probably. You kind of suss out who's got, who's hanging lower. Is that how you rate uh, Ben and Fritz? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. You keep an eye, keep an eye on, you know, what's going on. That's and, what they measure on the doorway. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Right outside the kitchen. Yeah. Yeah. Three inches yeah. last. Instead year. of going up the door frame, it's going out from the bathroom wall. <laughs> <laughs> You're pushing your hips in. You got to stop. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Straight up. Stop. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, you're on your tippy balls. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I wasn't even yeah. hard. <laughs> yeah. Have you given any speeches since? I'm trying to think. No, I don't. Th- I haven't done any. Wait, best what's man commencement? Speeches. What is that? Um, it's graduation. Graduation. Ah, yeah. Okay. Just yeah. like somebody commences the the day. I get that now. I didn't know if it was like beginning of the year, like pep rally type stuff. Okay, it makes sense now. Yeah. Actually, ooh, wish we weren't streaming live. I would say that is stupid enough that I would like to edit it out, but. Let's just let's keep going. <laughs> Fuck! Obviously, yeah. it's the beginning of graduation, Tim. Yeah, and it's for a cool guy who's not smart enough to be valedictorian, but they still want him to talk. Yep. Congratulations on that. I mean, Thank you. That's yeah. way better. Yeah, because other guys just got good at tests. Right. Like, you had to fucking grease some palms. I know. They didn't realize they could have just skipped Damn. that part and landed a nice, edgy joke about Biden's <laughs> dead. Land <laughs> of the dead sons. <laughs> I don't know, man. What you you look like a little stinker, man. It's like you got a little a little glint in your eye. I got you a look like stink. you're gonna say some, yeah, a little stank booty mm-hmm. for sure. Rob looks like a total sweetheart. You know, you know what you're getting with Rob. You're getting that cut and dry. Yeah, you're getting just feelings from the heart. Top level sweet boy. This really, I mean, the dichotomy is crazy. Yeah. The dichotomy is crazy. We have mischievous neighbor boy. Mm-hmm. <laughs> and well, no, yeah. no, no. The, you you give me a leading leading man in the eighties. Thank you so much. Whoa. Wow. Yeah. Okay. That's actually. I, I exactly feel like that's like spot going. on. <laughs> but that's what, everything I want to be. But what are we saying? Are we saying you Ralph know Monster. kind of rambunctious guy that's going after the girlfriend or the girlfriend's established boyfriend who I, kind of is better on paper? I think like yes. a, it's a morally infallible dude. Like I I think it's like old man scientist friend territory. Whoa! Really? Wow, then, Marty McFly. Yeah, I think it's wow. Marty McFly territory. You know what? I was friends with some old guys back in the day. This <laughs> was <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah, they were doing a lot of experiments on me. Um, <laughs> man, thank you so much. Yeah, bro. man. Jeez, I don't know what to say, dude. I'm fucking. I know that was just, right that was just regular. That was from the heart. Yeah. That yeah. That was you did it finally. Lazy Dave's and by the way, before we started, Lazy Dave's in the chat said that he. Uh, I think he said he buzzed his head and he feels like a fucking dickhead. Oh man. no, man. Are, do you guys constantly fight off the urge to just fucking take the clippers to your head at night? I was just thinking about it. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And thank God. I don't know. The, that It's the only thing that has me believing in God is that I haven't done it yet. Yeah. Because it, the, the, te- the temptation is like maddening. You ever you, see a hot guy with a shaved head, you immediately go, oh, maybe I should just take it all off. <laughs> Oh, yeah, a guy with, like, really well-developed traps. <laughs> I, I watched the David Beckham documentary, and he got oh. shaved head, and I went, maybe I should go for a new look. Yeah, it's time, and it's, it, there's no one around to talk to. Your girlfriend's asleep, <laughs> and you're just like, eh, I'll just surprise everybody with it tomorrow. Yeah, yeah. wait till they get a load of this. <laughs> Nobody cares. That's a that's a fracture in your timeline, by the way. <laughs> there's the life that you were living, and then kadoosh, you're in a brand new life. Yeah. And it's different from there on out. Everyone sees it. No one fucking... You know, no one likes it. No, now, it's the it's <laughs> yeah. the uh, dude version of giving yourself bang. Yeah, 
really fucking Whoa. grim stuff. I mean, it, you go, this was a really good idea at 11.30 last night, half a bottle of wine in. Yeah. yeah how'd you feel after shaving the stash? Pretty good, but I one time I had to shave a goatee. I had a big beard, and I had to shave it into a big, stupid goatee for a McKeever thing. And the next day, I went to work with it, and I just really wanted to die. Yeah. yeah. I wanted to die so bad, and I was just like... I didn't want to mention it to people mm -hmm. like it was a thing, but I and I and no one said a word to me, but everyone's face told me exactly what they were thinking. And I just felt like the biggest fucking loser ever. There, something about being from Philly where you cannot show up with a new look. Ooh, you can't Ooh. just you can't just unannounce new yeah. look. Hey, I this think that's is universal. Man. I think that's everywhere but you Philly go, especially Philly, like, uh, Philly. It's like a piranha tank, right? Do. The key is yeah. to do it on a day where one of Joe Biden's kids dies. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> like, get swept under the rug. Yeah, dude. I, the the most concerned I've ever seen my wife look at me was when I showed up uh, to her bedroom while she was asleep. <laughs> and uh, I was convinced that she loved Aaron Lewis, like she had a crush on him. So I was like, all right, maybe I can be more like Aaron Lewis. So I showed up while she was sleeping. Uh, with a shaved head, and I woke her up. <laughs> and, like, she did that thing that they do in movies where, like, they push themselves up in the bed <laughs> yeah, because yeah, they're yeah. so startled. Yeah. She's like, why did you do that? It's like, oh, and right. why did you wake me up? Yeah, <laughs> I couldn't exactly say it's because I thought you thought Aaron Lewis was cute. I th yeah, I thought I was going to get some middle-of-the-night pussy. Would <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> you calm down? Did he get the, the POSSSY? Yeah, I mean, she's a kind soul, but... Yeah, yeah, yeah. Not a hit. I, I look like uh, Michael Jackson in The Simpsons with a shaved head. <laughs> The, I I can imagine I'm picturing it. Yeah, yeah. That's you honestly, specific. with you with a shaved head, I imagine looks like someone's spray diarrhea at Uncle Fester. <laughs> <laughs> Dude, it's not that far off, man. Wow. Damn. Yeah, I would not do that now though, because I'm, I'm hanging on for dear life. Once you start losing hair, it's like, oh man, I I want every hair that's left on my head. Uh, yeah. I think uh I think one one of these days I'm just gonna show up with a fresh hair system. <laughs> yeah, it's gonna go. Nuts. Well, guys are going to Turkey now. Guys in the UFC, they're they're just coming back to the United States with full heads of fucking Mexican baby hair. Really, that's so nice. Mm -hmm. And what? How far is too far gone? Where you, like, there's no coming. What's the what's the point of no return on going ball? Just like if you are like really receding, like, and you come back with a fresh rug. If you're going a little bit, you if, and you get that done early, maybe. Like Steve Carell was a little bit. You know, remember like the first season of The Office? Yes. He was going, mm -hmm. and then he came back with a fresh piece. You kind of forget about it now. Yeah, he I covered it up because the show is so funny. Yeah. And I think that's the key. It's like something significant also has to be happening simultaneously with you appearing with that fresh head of hair. Yes. Right. So Joe Biden's son to... has got to die. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. That's the episode title. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, if you're if you're really going, it's uh, I, I want to get the ridiculous ones that you like stick on your head. Yeah, I like those. Yeah, I see a, a lot of better idea. Instagram now. Those are crazy. Yeah. The, the, the thing about the implants one is that like you don't come back looking like a fucking Indian model. You come back and you look like uh, the evil baby doll head from Toy Story. <laughs> yeah, one of like, Sid's toys. Yeah, yeah. You look like one of Sid's toys with just like kind of just freakish spikes coming out of your head. Yeah. Dude, all this hair yeah, talk yeah. got me riled up. So I want to take a th second to thank our sponsor, Manscaped. Listen up, our pals over at Manscaped have partnered with the Testicular Cancer Society to help spread awareness for UFC fighters going to Turkey to get hair implants. No, <laughs> for men's health and early cancer detection. One man every hour, every day is diagnosed with testicular cancer. Uh, would the three of you mind checking me while I read this ad? Perform simple routine self-checks at home while enjoying Manscaped products you use every day. I'm still not being checked. Like the Lawnmower 5.0 Ultra with dual LED spotlights, you'll achieve better visibility, making every trim more precise and hassle-free. Waterproof with wireless cha charging capabilities and a travel lock feature, this baby keeps your eggs smooth. In addition to providing the right tools and solutions for comfortable and easy grooming, Manscaped is committed to raising awareness and giving support for fighters, survivors, and families impacted by testicular cancer. That's why they're donating $50,000 to the Tes Testicular Cancer Society. Help save lives and balls by going over to manscaped.com slash TCS and sharing their funny educational check yourself video. And while you're at it, man, I don't like saying that. <laughs> and while you're at it, <laughs> grab 20% off plus free shipping with code FATBIRD. That's code FATBIRD at manscaped.com because like a famous American philosopher once said, take care of your mentals, your balls, and your chickens. Oh, that's got to be rewritten. I think I got a new copy guy over there. Yeah. But Manscaped does have great stuff, man. Support the show. Get 
free shipping at manscaped.com that might be, once you see code Fatbird. That that might be uh what part of what like uh makes me feel impulsive about shaving my head. It's just I got the I got all the equipment, you know. Yeah, you're you're a buzz away. How often how often are you trimming up your fucking nuts? Yeah. You know, like once mm-hmm. uh, uh, every 3 weeks. Once a month, you know. That's generous, man. And then, yeah. you, and then you look at it and you go, "What a great piece of hardware, man!" I, mm. I wouldn't mind running that through my fucking scalp. Rob, we're uh, we're going to the deep south this week. Are you shaved up? Oh, my dome. Hmm. Uh, are shaved up? Yeah. Uh, I I gotta shave everything, dude. I'm going like a seal. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's gonna be no. Nice. Uh, Rob, I saw something funny that reminded me of you because I wanted to see what the racial makeup of Columbus, Mississippi, was. Oh. So- <laughs> <laughs> and uh, part of the paragraph which explained the racial makeup, uh, the final sentence in that paragraph was, the children here in Columbus are fantastic. <laughs> <laughs> and that made you think of Rob? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> the children here are fantastic. Mm, oh, yeah. You think you had little kids before? Why do you come to Columbus? Yeah. Mm. These ain't your daddy's children. Hey, <laughs> <laughs> yo, gabba gabba goo. Ooh. Yeah, the, the hey, 60% black. Yeah. Really? Yeah. <laughs> the, uh-huh. isn't, the, didn't see that coming. Me neither, man. It's... Yeah, Columbus, Mississippi. I wouldn't think that would be the most diverse place. Yeah, even though bus is in the name. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. What made you guys nah, I kid, think I kid. to check this? You know me, man. <laughs> uh, uh, Naeem. Naeem. Uh, yeah, it was Naeem. Well, <laughs> okay. When are you guys going? Thursday morning. Fuck yeah. Yeah, th- th- excited. Three, 3.30 we got to be at the airport. I know, man. Hey, pretty early. Yeah. <laughs> well, but, uh, tell tell everyone why you're going there. Yeah, we're going for an event <laughs> called Porch Fest. Yeah. Which is in which Columbus. That's Mississippi. a tough name for yeah. a black yes. town. Yes. <laughs> Jeez, dude. Yeah. A porch. Yeah, it's, it's just going to be a. Monkeying around a porch yeah, fest. Monkeying around a porch fest. <laughs> Handing out fire the smoke detector batteries. <laughs> but yeah, it's a cool yeah. event with uh, lots of live music. And uh, Rob, Naeem, Drew, and I are going to be the comedic entertainment. Yes, we're, we're going to do a live cast on Friday, then just good old stand up on Saturday. Will you, will on you porch? flex any musical skills? All on porch. Uh, I I'm He will. There, there's probably going to be an open jam of some sort. You could probably sneak You're gonna in. You're going to hop there. in. Open yeah, jam cause, slip in. Cuz Porch Fest is like notoriously like hipsters and stuff like that I feel like. Mm-hmm. Ooh, what if they hate you guys? Hey, possibility. What if they, yeah, what if they I, have a visceral reaction <laughs> to your shit? Wouldn't that be awesome? Yeah, I got to go through my set for sure. Think about a few things. <laughs> no, I, <swear> that. <laughs> I mean more the podcast. You guys are going to be doing Durag and the Deer Tag mm-hmm. on a porch. What are people just walking by and you're with trying the, to get their attention? <laughs> it's the end of the night, too, which might be tough for people. It's going to be midnight where we go on to do the podcast. So people have been drinking all day, so it should be interesting. It's right? going to be 60% floating eyes and teeth. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, <laughs> nah, I kid, I kid, but that's the kind of stuff we'll be doing. <laughs> I mean, who am I, dude? If, but, if um, I walk past four white dudes at midnight though in do rags, though, I would, uh, I'd be pretty terrified. Yeah, yeah. I, I would say the higher ups showed up for something, dude. <laughs> A deal went awry. Yeah. yeah, you think we're in trouble? Yeah, yeah. Surge pricing at that event is going to be going nuts at 12 a.m. on Friday night. Yeah. yeah. Jesus fucking Christ, man. Yeah, it's going to be fun, though. It's free, though. So if anybody lives in or around Columbus, Mississippi, come hang out with us. Fuck yeah. Yeah, it's, it's going to be a blast. We're, we're, we're going to be the kings for a little bit, dude. We're going to do a little Airbnb. Oh, my God. We have a, we a gonna, lake? Yeah, we got a lake. Damn. You want to piss in it? <laughs> yeah, I'm definitely pissing in the Not much lake. swimming. <laughs> <laughs> Yikes. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah. Sorry about that. That the knife brings it out of you, dude. Yeah, I thought, yeah, dude. Having so a powerful. weapon in your hand just really this is like makes a, slurs fly <laughs> out of you. It's like a Philly fidget spinner. It does like, <laughs> calm me down. <laughs> Tim, what's the most powerful thing that you could hold in your hand? Most powerful thing you can hold in your hand. The item say, that makes you feel more powerful. I would than say anything else. One of the children of your enemies. <laughs> oh, yeah, that is I'm, nice. and I'm saying, I, you know, maybe, maybe I'm, maybe I'm making a, a leap here, but like you think about what jar, what charges you up when you grab it, and now you think about a blood enemy, and you're holding their infant. Bro, are you? Did you read this from uh, a Reddit post recently? Because I saw one. I think it's on the Mi the Asshole subreddit. 
where a guy's like, I don't think my kids mind because I saw a picture of my wife's phone of her ex-boyfriend on my couch holding my newborn. Yikes. Oh, yeah, I did see that. Oh, my God. That was more of a suspicion thing. I'm talking about, like, you've got a to-the-death enemy and you have access to their infant. You could just fucking throw it to the ground as hard as you And I feel like it is especially powerful when they, like, barge in, like, in a panic. Oh, yeah. And the baby's sleeping and you're like, shh. Yeah. Oh, don't wake me. Don't wake baby. You have your ass finished the baba that I made for him. It's the plot of Rush Hour, dude. Leave her out of there. Yeah. Never, 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 <laughs> never touch a black man's baby. <laughs> the, the, I, I, I think it would be powerful uh, to be fucking uh, uh, Nicolas Cage in Face Off. Mm. Just being Nick Cage in life would be pretty powerful, you know. Yeah, true. Okay. But yeah, he, he was fucking uh, uh, John Travolta's wife. That was in real sick. life. Uh, no, in the in the movie Face Off. Uh. <laughs> yeah. Have you ever seen Face Off? I believe so. Brother, go back and give it a, re- a rewatch, dude. It, it's probably w- one of the best movies of all time that say the title and the name. Yeah. <laughs> the great the uh, artwork to me in Callahan's podcast is Face Off, but with both of our faces. Like, you know how it's Travolta and Nick Cage? <laughs> yeah, yeah. That's the artwork of our podcast, oh, but it's awesome. our faces. Yeah, so pretty inspired. Rob, when was the first time you saw Face Off? Was it pretty recently? The So the, the first time I saw it was like back in high school, but like oh, I, I might as well have forgot it, and then uh, me yeah. and my lady rewatched it uh, this weekend. You guys make the craziest decisions on what to watch. <laughs> yeah, we do. Yeah, like where, where did that even pop up that you were surfing around and go, hang on, let's do Face Off tonight. Yeah. Dude, just a pure scroll. We, we wild scroll. They did three weeks of only watching, um, what was it? The uh, Master of Disguise. <laughs> yeah. I mean, that, don't get me started. And he went, <laughs> and he went through waves of that, like. That was my first face off. <laughs> <laughs> he went through waves of like, uh, what a laugh, right? And then he would dip down into like, it's actually really good. And then back into making fun of it, and it was really, it was really nuts to watch. Yeah. What's your stance on it now? It's so good. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's genuinely great writing. Yeah. Uh, yeah. If you had the opportunity to sit down at the table with Dana Carvey to tell him that you saw him at a random restaurant, would you sit down? Yeah, absolutely. Dude. For an hour. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Only talking about Master of Disguise. And then Claudia will walk up and I'll be like, yo, fuck off. Wow. <laughs> Ladies are trying to bother us. <laughs> yeah. Master oh, of man. Disguise changed my life. Did you guys get any sun today? <laughs> hmm? Did you get any sun today? Yes. <laughs> Wait, what? Did. did you get any sun today? It was the first like, hot day we've had. S- yeah. U N? <laughs> yes. <What>? No, S O N. I did. Yeah, I was I was out and about. Yeah, it was a beautiful day, didn't it, baby? <laughs> Tiny bit. I did my taxes today. That fucking pissed me off. Oh, dude. Doing taxes on the first nice day. The, don't come to me with a fucking 1099 the day after the eclipse, dude. Yeah. Oh, yeah, did you guys take in the eclipse? Yes. Yeah. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> really, really, shut, really shut that down. Nope. No. Next. <laughs> the fuck. I how, how old are you? I'm with you, Brendan. <laughs> uh, Brendan. How old are you? Thirty one. Thirty one. All right. You know, spring chicken. But, yeah. You know, you do kind of worry. Like, am I going to be alive in twenty years? Yeah. He is a father, time? though. I am. Yeah. Yeah. It's not that I am not about eclipses. I just didn't catch it. I just uh, I was, I was working. Uh, working is okay. Was inside. Yeah. Uh, uh, somebody sent me uh, the eclipse. It was. Uh, you know, something coming over the sun, and it was just a dude's nutsack. That, that was, pretty, that was, <laughs> yeah. that was, that was good the best stuff. bit ever. Yeah. That dick clips. Yeah, that's good stuff. Yes. <laughs> so, kind of saw it. <laughs> Come on. Man. You an eclipse man, Tim? You strike me as an eclipse guy. Yeah, what the fucking? I have a six year old dude. I got to show him the majesty of the cosmos. <laughs> what the hell, <laughs> man? <laughs> What am I gonna not, dude? Imagine if I was so like too cool for school that I was just like Fritz. I know your teacher's talking about this shit. We don't care. Yeah. The, the, you're gonna get excited for the fucking eclipse. Like I'm like I'm trying to avoid going to Teletubbies on ice, mm-hmm. and it's actually like a celestial event that like is pretty rare and like you know it, it would be mesmerizing to a child. So we went out. I made the cereal box pinhole thing, by the way, and I actually got it to work. I don't know if you guys have ever I, even I saw that. Yeah. tried that shit, but it just blocks out light and you just see it through the hole no <laughs> it's a eclipse glory hole not, <laughs> yeah. not even dude no do tell what it does is it creates a little dark box with a pinhole in the top of it and now so now you hold it and you look down into it 
but the sun and the eclipse is also shining down through a little hole that you created. And now you've got a little circle on the bottom of light. And in that circle, you can watch the eclipse take place oh. and it gets slowly blocked out. Ooh. And I'll, I got to tell you, it sounds pretty fucking lame. I understand that. But I was also, I put on the glasses and you really only just see a circle with a thing going over it anyway. Right. So you might as well. And I had the added benefit of like, my son thinks I'm a wizard. My neighbors who are like elderly and lead poisoned, I think, go, wow. I can't believe you really pulled it off. Yeah. yeah. Plus you get to eat all the cereal. <laughs> the best better part. Finish off. Yeah, better finish off the cinnamon toast crunch. Yeah, that stuff is cool. My brother has a pretty sick telescope. He'll bring it over sometimes. Jealous. Yeah. Ooh, jealous. Pretty cool. Ooh, I would love to really get uh, obliterated you... and stare through the uh, telescope. Dude, come over, dude. We'll just Please. scope it out. Oh, my God. Yeah. yeah. I mean, I'm probably going to bother your wife. <laughs> 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 He's drunk and obnoxious. <laughs> <laughs> He's extremely high and on mushrooms. Dude, it's so hard. And he keeps screaming into the telescope trying to talk to God. <laughs> <laughs> Please ask him to leave. Yeah. Has your brother ever put his balls in front of the telescope yet? I haven't asked him, but um, I don't think so. <laughs> God, that'd be so funny. <laughs> yeah, but I'm going to mention it to him. Mm. I'm going to tell him, like, dude, you got to try this. With oh, my it. God. He hasn't already. He you might. get him looking in, just fully committed to it, and then you spread your asshole in front of the lens. Yeah, dude, that's one of the things. When you buy a telescope, they make you swear that you do not have a brother because it's going to be used for that. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Yeah, I, I think he would totally be down. He lives with my mom right now, though, and he's uh, 33, so... Oh, classic. Oh, no. Oh, that's um, nice. Ball yeah. in front of the telescope. Behavior. Does he have a girlfriend? No. Single guy. And he's, Ooh. like... He, he's, telescope a recent purchase? <laughs> <laughs> um, He's had it for a little bit. He's a pharmacist. He's, like, pretty successful. He's oh, just... Okay. Uh, yeah, he's just, I don't know. He's doing his thing right now. <laughs> <laughs> you know, yeah, you the... <laughs> yeah, just yeah. into the cosmos, dude. <laughs> He's doing his thing. Yeah. Oh, no. yeah. I, I mean, I feel like that—that's a power move. When like you're you're in a gray area of life, you're like, let me find the larger truth. Yeah, yeah, but you get I you get addicted to that so easy. I can't, I can't, dude. If I didn't have a wife and kids, and I got into telescopes now. I'm not coming back. Yeah, he's got a lot of hobbies right now that we're trying to kick him off. Oh, you know? he's living my dream. What's the most pressing one? He just, he reads a lot. And, like, to the point where he's got, like, a little Beauty and the Beast library set up in the <sighs> attic where we're like, dude. Um, Does he have the rolly ladder? No, which maybe. Does he have a talking <laughs> teapot? <laughs> <laughs> if he had both of those things, I wouldn't be so upset. Like, he should get one of the, the two. But, no, he's just kind of, he set up shop up there. And we're like, dude, you got to um, you gotta get back out there. Mm. You know, but he just likes. Did he go through like a nasty breakup or anything? He did, yeah. He yeah. went through a couple of nasty breakups that really fucked him up, unfortunately. But, uh so he's he's been uh, just trying to like get his shit together back at home, save some money, and you know get back out there, building up his confidence, building up his confidence. Yeah. But uh, I'm like, dude, you gotta you gotta start making some moves. How tall is he? He's my size, so about male male American average. <laughs> that was close. Uh, yeah, he's about uh, five seven, five nine in heels. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. um, Very nice Goatee No right. Clean shaven Looks like me He's just like a stockier Like could fuck me up version of me Well like, a sturdier Brendan And with yeah. a great job Yeah it Makes way more money than me And he's holed up in the study It sounds like I'm shitting on him He's just a really no, smart no, no. guy No 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 I'm trying to paint a picture of this guy Because this is compelling stuff to me Yeah And so he <laughs> What's he like to read about mostly? Or is it just like he's, anything to fill the void? He's really uh, like sci-fi, Game of Thrones, Star Wars. Oh th not, not that he's reading, the, you know, oh my God. obviously those have been out, but stuff like that. That's his thing. Yeah. Yeah, yeah I respect the hell out of it. Is he that. very active in any online forums? I'll tell you what. He's oh, no. <laughs> <laughs> he's, di he's, he's dipping into writing his own thing right now. <laughs> <laughs> Which I would say that to answer your question, Mike, is the most concerning. Um, he'll hit me up. Uh, he'll be like, dude, what do you think about this for the name of a spell? <laughs> oh, the name of a spell, oh, dude. I gotta stop talking about. It. I fucking love it. <laughs> this is, I, dude, I've never related to somebody to death, more He's in the my fucking life. life. This but, is how uh, my wife would talk about me. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, he's uh, he's got a lot of hobbies right now. He's got to stick to one or two. Does his ex-girlfriend know he's creating spells? And is one of them a love spell? 
Um, no, no, it's definitely, if anything, it's a vengeance spell. Oh, okay. I think, you know, Ooh. probably dragons involved and stuff. Dumb bitches! <laughs> <laughs> and yeah. you ever, you ever know someone that wrote uh, a fantasy novel or anything? No. Um, oh, he's the first. He's the first. <laughs> oh, dude. You sound like you do. That is brutal. Yeah, I've known some people who've dipped their toe in fantasy, and it is... Like it's a I yeah, I seem like I would line up perfectly with fan I even books that people even fantasy books that were written by real authors that have been recommended to me I just read it and I cringe so hard yeah as they're trying to like di- as they're trying to world build and they're throwing in all the fucking like magical jargon and shit like that and yeah. like specifically describing like some some person's like m- what makes them magic and stuff like that it's yeah. like dude open like all thing authors oh. that is that's a tough game. That's, oh, that's a tough circuit. The barrier for being published in fantasy is so fucking low. And it's, I mean, it's just like comedy. Like, you know, if I'm allowed to fucking sneak my foot in the door, like, the fantasy authors are not very good. Right. Yeah. And man, oh man, that is, that is some of the, if you really like that, like, I don't know if cringe is the right word, but if you, like, really bum out stuff, consume some of that. Yeah, but the cool thing cool. is, I mean, if he's that super into it where he's creating his own worlds, he's bound to find his maiden. That's what I'm hoping. I'm like, For you. Sure. Like, there is something that's really good about you just get into whatever it is that you're into, and you will find people that are also into the same shit, mm-hmm. which I think yep. would be really good for him. Yeah. yeah. But um, he's like, he does a lot of stuff, which is good, but I'm also like, he doesn't take it to the streets with it. Yeah. Let me read the book, you yeah. know? Let me, let me take a look at it. He's very secretive about this whole operation as I'm blowing up his fucking spot on the podcast. But no, long, no, we're how saying good thing for him. I don't know. Um, probably a better part of the last year. Dude. Yeah, that that's nice though. Yeah. There's honeys that's uh, that it will work on. For sure. Yeah. Yeah. And he that's it. You gotta show them. His mind. You gotta you gotta peacock it a little bit, dude. Yeah. Yeah, meet up with some peeps that are into the same stuff. Yeah. And then I I kinda have uh the a similar setup, but I'm I'm married and I don't have to take it to the streets. So this is me talking from a point of like comfort where I can't imagine being in his scenario. Yeah. You know what I mean? Were you aware that your wife had a lot of the same interests at first or my did wife you have has to gradually break Almost it none her? of the same interests as me. I do a lot of this alone in the basement. Really? <laughs> yeah. Uh is there... my wife has any interest in learning how to use a soldering iron. All right. Is there a no girls allowed sign above the basement to keep her uh out of your world <laughs> or do you Give her a time where she's like, okay, this is what I'm into. You know what's funny is she has to walk by the entrance to the (laughs) Twitch studio to get to the washer and dryer. It's just a a bunch of couch pillows of a fort. (laughs) There is a couch. Get out of here. There is a very cool couch and lots of very cool lighting and uh, a Nintendo 64. But uh, we've developed a relationship where she peeks her head in and she's holding a basket of laundry and she goes, you know, oh, he's enjoying himself. Great. And at least I know where he is. Right. You you have the, the rare combo of man cave happy marriage. It's not a man cave. <laughs> it's, it's <laughs> a man no, it's not a man cave. <laughs> it's definitely no, it's not a man, man cave. cave. No, oh, my wife smokes weed in there. Not to blow up her spot. Okay. All right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Maybe, maybe that's a secret. It is, it's girls allowed. Girls so it's allowed not a man, man cave. cave. I don't know right. what you call that. Rec room? Cave? Twitch studio. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, cave is a pretty good name cave. for it. <laughs> a house? Oh, man. House Rob, what? do you have a man cave set up at your place? Uh, no. <laughs> it's, it's, uh, I have the living room. That, that's Ooh, my spot. Dominant. Yes. And what then a... and then she she has an office upstairs because I, I can work here. So uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. That, that's how it goes. But we have a basement that I want to do something with. Oh. Yeah. Dude, I want to do my basement so fucking bad, dude. Yeah. Something about becoming a father um really just makes like I'm so into wanting to learn how to just fix up a house mm-hmm. and frame out a basement. I want a garage really bad. Yeah. Ooh, I want to build a oh, shed. That's baby. that's my YouTube videos right now is build a DIY shed. <sighs> That's all I'm so watching, nice. dude. I go, I go home. I just watch DIY videos and mm-hmm. building sheds. Yeah. That's brag, but, uh, no, I'm I'm right there with you, buddy. Yeah. Another hobby. <sighs> uh, I would like to fucking trick out a van. That would be awesome. You yeah. look like a van man. Yeah. Yes. I used to be a van man, but it wasn't anything like crazy. We just built like a bunk oh, in cool. there, and that was fun. Yeah. But like, I, I want to like really do it up. How many like, dudes? I, how many I, dudes in the van? No shower, I'm assuming. No shower. We we had um it's been ah, fuck, I forget what it was called, but it was like this big bucket of water with like a little like spray thing on it. You can like <laughs> pressure. Just you back it in a seat. Yeah. 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 <laughs> <laughs> Another cut point. <laughs> <laughs> it's a hot silhouette of a picture. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh sorry, what'd you say? Were there graphics on the side of the van? 
No, no. We we, uh, we we were thinking about it, but, but we <laughs> realized it was like a big like, hey, rob us. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Hey, yeah. there's forty five hundred dollars in <laughs> Sam Ash credit in yes. this van. Yeah. Was that what the band groupies would say? That we we didn't really, we got no pussy, dude. Never. No, <laughs> that, and no I, one snuck they away. They didn't want to get robbed. We, we were all fucking <laughs> nerds that to get robbed. Mm -hmm. Is that what you said? <laughs> that's nice. that's nice. Hey, that's good. <laughs> hey, good. I remember it um, blew my mind when I found out how musically talented you were. Oh, like please. you came over one time, we hung out, and then <laughs> Start I fucking ripping a solo. <laughs> no, it wasn't. Like it's I, nothing. Play like a flute. <laughs> <laughs> Green Ranger. Please, uh, the Green Ranger. No, the fucking Zord comes out. I'm not prepared. Pulled it out. <laughs> oh, I, I feel like the the good musician comedians that I know are very hesitant to let that side shine through. Right. Like Tim's very good. Rob's very good. And McCusker can fucking shred too. Yeah. Really? Yeah. I saw oh, that wait, on no, a Kill Tony that. episode. Yeah. I was like, holy shit. He yeah. Actually he took it to really... the streets. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> That's what you got to do. It is a nice little thing to whip out. Jake can play too. Yeah. Yeah. Good. Yeah. He was in like bands in high school and stuff, right? Yeah. That's sick. Oh man, I'd love to get him in front of a band. I'd love to get Jake fronting a band right now. I fucking love that dude. That'd be so great. Just big and nerdy as hell. That uh sketch yeah. that he did forever ago when it was um playing the guitar, sleep guitar. I don't know if uh, you yeah, saw yeah. it. It was so yeah. fucking funny, dude. That he just like dream walks and <laughs> solos on his guitar. <laughs> Yeah, he does a lot in his sleep. I, I've shared rooms with him. Really? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Apnea. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Apnea is his encore. Yeah. <laughs> the apnea is is that snoring? No. Um. Yeah. It's, that's the electric guitar of sleeping. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I'm an acoustic guy myself. I just breathe regular, unplugged air. Uh, yeah. That's nice. That's nice analog. <laughs> Do you have difficulties uh, in your sleep? Apparently. <laughs> Apparently I was snoring oh, it up at the yeah. hotel. What? Yeah. But that, that's usually what I'm hammered. I don't, I don't think I did that on the rig. Did I? I don't know. I think every stop so far. Every stop? Uh, I've snored? No yeah, way. Yeah, I think so. Damn. If I drink, I'll, I'll snore. Drinking yeah. is definitely like, uh, will we'll get you snoring, I think. Mm -hmm. I think drinking is a, you know. Yeah, that, that blocks the, the airways. In Boston, it was brutal. I, like, hiccuped for, like, four hours. Yeah, dude. And, <laughs> and snored. It was like night. traveling with a sick pet, dude. <laughs> <laughs> and and it wasn't, yo, okay, I'm, I'm, we're saying hiccups, and you're imagining... <laughs> <laughs> what what Rob does is... <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, guys, I got fucking hiccups. <laughs> <laughs> Rob, why were they so violent? The, the I don't know. I was like pretty dehydrated and like we we were just. <laughs> he was emotionally was unprepared. Bit. Emotionally unprepared for hiccups. Yes. Really brutal. Do you ever think about yeah, we, getting we, like a sleep study or, or something? <clears throat> yeah. He needs a wake study, <laughs> dude. This is why we were <laughs> you're trying to talk <laughs> to each other. <laughs> and I, I think we were we were uh, trying to get in some good conversation too. We were talking about early days of like stand up or something like that. And then I was like. <laughs> Yeah, yeah. Just, uh, <laughs> yeah, the first time I got booked. <laughs> <laughs> My dad used to snore so loud it would shake the fucking house. Like I remember when mm. as a kid That's good dad stuff, dude. Yeah. 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 I remember looking at my Poop mom. Poop stains in like, your underwear yeah. really loud <laughs> Real loud snore <laughs> real loud sneeze. Yeah. Old whitey tidy underwear yeah. too. Like but I remember looking at my mom and be like, I don't know how you can sleep in the same bed. Like it was my friends would come over and hear They'd be like, is your dad, like, in the war or something? I'm like, no, he's in insurance. He just fucking... <laughs> yeah. Like that. yeah, that's a man who uh, has a stressful life. Yeah. <laughs> Give him a break. Loud yeah, yeah men just become noisier when we get older. Yeah. Mm -hmm. True. And that the asshole becomes looser. Oh, yeah, dude. Really it slips mm -hmm. right out. Uh, I, know, I, I, I noticed that maybe, maybe it's just my dad. No, a, I, a little, a little, uh, a little. So. My shit still, my shit still be gripping. <laughs> you think so? <laughs> oh, for sure. Really grip. My lid is not so tight anymore. Dude. I'm fucking letting it fly. <laughs> really? Dude. Yeah. You got it. I can't, I can't hold them in anymore, dude. After mm. you're married for a little bit, it's just no. Yeah, there's you a dip. Yeah, you should dip in your go. early 30s where not shitting yourself becomes a significant issue, and then I think you kind of mature, mature in some ways. Right. Your biome gets Tighten a little bit seasoned. And it goes away. Are you a uh, part in front of the lady guys? Yeah. Yeah. Part. Yeah. You got it. Constant. Yeah. Yeah. I wear. It. I wonder what my dad was up to because his tidy whities would always be <laughs> all over the floor, and dude, it wouldn't just be like a little bit clearly eked out. Like there would be full on, <laughs> like my mom would call them bacon strips. Really? Yeah. 
Full and, and dude, he was, uh, I mean, from, for his credit, he would, uh, he would swing from the heels when he farted. <laughs> so swing it was from al- the heels. It was yeah. always like power. You knew when for he the farted. Fences, yeah. If you were elsewhere in the house, you knew when my dad farted. But yeah, man, he telegraphed it. Yeah, I mean, at what cost? He was probably also <laughs> scratching his hole a lot and just driving that shit in there. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Even, if you're, it's, so, if, even if you're not like borderline shitting your pants, though, like white underwear is just a insane. Why was why were no. we all doing that no. back in the 90s? Like, wh- why did nobody figure out like, hey, black underwear? That was just, the, I mean, it's what people did. It, you know, it, it just didn't have the attention it needed, you know? Yeah, like uh, AIDS research or something. Yeah, yeah. Wow. He would walk around. The AIDS too. was only around since the eighties. We've been wearing <laughs> yeah. underwear yeah. for how long? Yeah. Um, dads. Yeah. Damn. And then also, their underwear is slowly detaching from the elastic band. Oh yeah. Like yeah. Just, One day it just pops. Looks like bridge cables. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah. And it finally just gives up and withers away. It's, it's like a thong. Hit it. <laughs> yeah. By the time they're done with that thing. One problem he always had too was the uh, the uh, scroat section would come apart from the leg so there would be a little bit revealed <laughs> yeah. oh Ooh. yeah oh because he's That's on day two sexy. of it and the uh, leg rings stretched out yeah. i'd like that <laughs> yeah that's uh, like yourself or your dad showing a little skin uh, whoever yeah. yeah 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 that that's tasteful yeah like, that's like when a, a lady in a non-porno magazine has a little bit of you know bathing mm-hmm. suit drift yes yeah. a little side boob or something that's the dad version yeah, yeah a little side, side nut, yeah. little side nut. <laughs> 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 that's nice yeah I don't did, know did you ever have a like a sleep talking or sleep walking dead my dad was uh, no was a sleepwalker. Really? Not so. I mean, I have to take this with because he never did it as an adult. But apparently, like my grandpa would catch him walking around the block. But also, was he just a teenager lying? Like I was yeah. sleepwalking. Uh, yeah, but yeah. But apparently, yeah. I mean, he was one of twelve kids, and all of his siblings were like, "No, Mike used to sleepwalk." <sighs> yeah, that's nice. Uh, my, my kids have all slept walked at one point. Well, I, I say sleepwalk, but they've all had weird sleep uh, episodes. And for a long time, uh, <clears throat> he's not in it anymore, but we, we had to have Fritz sleep inside of a tent on top of his bed. I've heard of those things. Yeah. And it, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, tents are pretty sick. <laughs> we, 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 had to put the, we had to put the mattress in the tent and put the whole thing on the bed frame. <laughs> yeah. It was because he was getting up in the middle of the night. He would go up onto his knees on his bed and throw himself face first <laughs> off the edge. Dude, we had to stop dad me one time because oh, that happened. Yeah, yeah, really? yeah, yeah, yeah. He went off the edge and I think he went head first into a radiator. And like Fritz is so mad. Permanently dis- deformed his skull. Wow. Just for no reason in the middle of the night. Yeah. He would prairie dog up and then just flop as hard as he could. That's one of those things as a dad, I'm sure, like you just you have a kid thinking like you never anticipated that that was going to be an issue like it's I was something to put insane. in some sort of tent. Yeah. I mean, situation. Every day is more confusing than the one before it. Yeah, I mean, yeah. my son just turned one, so like we haven't got to anything too crazy right now. But I'm uh, you, you're not prepared for any of it, man. Right, all that <laughs> dumb weird shit. <laughs> yeah, Rob, Brendan, do you guys want to promote anything before we go? Um, uh, do rag in the deer tag, baby. Do uh, patreon.com slash do rag in the deer tag. Gonna be in Mississippi with my guy Mike. Can't wait. Fuck yeah. And uh, yeah, I think that's it. Nice. Um, South Jersey Bad Boys, my podcast I do with my buddy Dan Callahan. Really makes me laugh. Funny dude. Check it out. Um, I'm going to be in Boston this weekend myself, actually. Nice. Excited for that. Sweet. And um, I I do my own show uh, at this place, Re-Up Fashion in South Jersey. I got Mike on it uh, it, May 18th. Um, So I'll be posting about that on Instagram. Check that out. And it should be fun. Hell yeah. Well, um, watch Tim Butterly's show. Um, I'm trying to do Twitch streams here and there as well. Um, which I mean, what a lame way to promote it. No, the Twitch streams rule. It's just I'm trying to figure out what to do for live streaming and stuff like that. Um, and also, uh, if you're near Pottstown or even Philly, come to Soul Joel's. I'm headlining on uh, Saturday, May 18th, and um, I have more dates around the country later in the year. And I think uh, again, I keep teasing this announcement that uh, these these other dates are being filled in. But it'll all be on timbutterly.com um, when it comes out. Fuck yeah. Thank you. Sweet, baby. Hey, thanks to everybody that came out this past weekend. Uh, for Boston and Hartford, both of those places fucking ruled. Um, just incredible cities, man. We had a blast. Um, yeah, yeah, this shout week. Shout out to Hideout Comedy oh, and, they're incredible. and Filthy Comedy. Yeah, Hideout Comedy and Filthy Comedy. Hideout uh, was in Boston and Filthy uh, was Aisha May. She runs a great show in Hartford. She runs shows all throughout uh, New England. But we did one in Hartford, and uh, it was as well run and as fun a time as the show could possibly be. Fuck you. Yeah. Um, yeah, I'll be with Rob and the Do Right guys in Columbus, Mississippi this weekend. 
Friday and Saturday uh, at Porch Fest 24. April 27th, I'm doing Mike Rainey and Friends at Soul Joel's in Royersford. And then May 4th, we're doing uh, a little stinkers uh, stand-up show in Mars Plains, New Jersey at the Dojo of Comedy. We added a third show because the first two sold out in Chicago. So thanks for making that happen. Um, so there's the third show is happening May 26 at 8 p.m. There's still tickets for that. And then on uh, June 1st, I'm doing another Mike Rainey and Friends at the Ethical Society. Nothing ethical about this show. I'll tell you that <laughs> <laughs> Bad boy Shit. alert. June 1st, Ethical Society in Philly. It'll be me, Rob, Drew, Naeem, Jimmy Gillespie, and uh, John Kenzel. So a lot of good stuff coming up, and you can check out all these dates on my link tree on all my social media profiles, which are at Mike Rainey 82. And, uh, yeah, we're about to head over to the Patreon. Uh, we're going to do another hour with uh, Brendan and Rob. Go to patreon.com slash Podcast. And uh, pay whatever you want. Pay a fucking dollar for the month, whatever you feel like paying. And uh, you get access to these sweet boys. And we'll see you in.